No, I cannot be the only one. Who doesn't only want to smell like shower gel or the ocean when I want to smell fresh. Obviously, these are very effective ways of smelling fresh. They're very popular. They sell well. That's why they're still being made, especially for men. And the more you smell like a piece of metal dipped into some suave body wash for men, the sexier you are, right? Let's cut to the chase. I'm sharing 10 fragrances with you guys that I believe are fresh, mass appealing, and not generic. They achieve freshness in very unique ways and very special ways. I wanna open your mind a bit in this video. All modern fragrances, timeless in many ways, fresh and unique ways. So let's dive right into it. No particular order. We will have, I believe, a majority of designer fragrances, some of which are very inexpensive. This is one of them. Coming from Rochas. We have Lom Rochas. First thing to say, not a very strong fragrance. I don't get much more than about six hours out of this, maybe seven, but that's all I need out of a fresh scent because I'll be ready to spray on something else after that. It could be more of this, it could be something new. So I wouldn't be too upset about fresh fragrances and their performance, no matter what it is. This is fresh, spicy, aromatic, and fruity. There's a sweetness from pineapple in here, but there's also this kind of warm, musky woodiness, almost ambery as it dries on the skin, it actually makes it a little bit sexy when it dries down, but mostly it is pretty casual. I would wear it in the heat. I would wear it when I am not taking anything too seriously, but it is a little bit special. Does it smell blue as it looks? A little bit, but there's more to it than just that. Something special with this one. I do enjoy it and it's been growing on me. Even though I've had it for a while, I haven't really given it much time of day and I've been revisiting it recently and really enjoying it. And I can easily recommend it as a fragrance that doesn't cost a ton of money, that's a little bit different off the beaten path and still achieves the objective of smelling fresh and mass appealing. That is Lone Rochas. This next one is very special because it may not be very easy to find. This was sent to me by fragrancebuy.ca. If you can't get this one, I do apologize. There's plenty of others here that should be easier to acquire. But if you can try this, I recommend it. This has been on my radar for years, and I'm so happy to finally have it and be able to wear it. This is from Cartier. It's called Roadster. And this is a mint-based fragrance, mostly very fresh, green, herbal mint. There's a little bit of a sweet creaminess from vanilla as it dries, and to keep it from just being fresh and green and sweet, there is a nice bit of vetiver in here that adds a dry woody texture. So it keeps it grounded, it keeps it feeling, I guess, maybe more masculine leaning. Still quite clean, again on the minty side, but does have a little bit of depth. I wore this last night for the first time. I loved it, I loved every minute of it, and even more as it dries down. It doesn't change a whole lot on the skin, but for the time that it's there, it's fresh, and I think it's very appealing. This is Cartier Roadster. Get it if you can. I'll link to what I can find down below, but if it's gone, I'm sorry. Up next is one of two niche fragrances in this list, and this is a strange one. If you looked at the note breakdown of this fragrance, you would not expect it to be fresh. You might expect it from the name, but once you take a look at the ingredients, you're like, how is this fresh? This is from Fragrance du Bois. It's called Oud Bleu Intense. And this achieves freshness in one of the most unique ways I've experienced. It uses balsams, resins, to make freshness. It combines that with spices, namely fresh spices, and quite a bit of citrus. A lot of orange in here, mandarin orange to be exact. A little bit sweeter, fruitier, juicier than other orange types. You have a, a resinous heart from myrrh and olibanum, which brings an almost incense smoky vibe, but not in a burning way, more in a cooling smoky way. Again, lending to freshness. There's even more resins as it dries down in the base. Lots of resins going on in here, but still fresh, still comes off as something quite easy to wear, but also may not smell like anything you've ever smelled before. For those looking for a very easy to wear, very versatile niche fragrance that is truly niche because it smells like nothing else, but pretty much anyone around you will enjoy this. This is Oud Bleu Intense from Fragrance du Bois. Up next, we have another green fragrance that claims to be green and is a little green, but not all that green. It's actually more orange. This is coming from Lolita Limpica. You don't see a lot of talk about this one. They call it Green Lover. Man, this is a gorgeous fragrance and I love it because it 
gives me a personal association that's very pleasant. This smells to me like orange vanilla cream sickles in the summertime. You know, they're covered in like that orange frozen kind of sherbet feel or popsicle. Inside is vanilla ice cream. It smells like that. There's a creaminess. There's like a sweet orangey fruitiness to it. It's smooth. It's fresh. But there's more than that. There's actually a lot of juniper berry in here, which is a sharp note, kind of a sharp, almost green, almost gin like note. And combining with the sweet creaminess, very special scent. Doesn't change a whole lot, not a whole lot of depth, but really playful. Again, very easy to like, very easy to wear. Shines in the heat. It's just so fun, but different. Lolita Limpica, Green Lover. We got another fun and playful one here, but again, very, very unique. We have sweet rum with like a crushed sugar feel. We have some fresh spices in there. It smells like a drink on the beach or the side of the pool. Totally vacation, but very different not overtly tropical. This is Linsumi from Lalique. I basically described it already. It's rum, like a sweet crushed sugary feel, black pepper, making it spicy, maybe some woods backing it up. Doesn't really smell like anything else out there. May not smell the most natural, I'll be honest, but for the price that you can pay for this, which is easily under 40 bucks, I believe, totally worth it for a unique take on a great summertime freshy that doesn't really smell like everything else out there and people are gonna enjoy this easily, especially when you wear it on the right occasions. Linsumi from Lalique. Now this fragrance has the word aqua in its name, which might have you thinking, all right, Justin, you're being contradictory. This does not smell like an aquatic scent, at least not one that you would expect. It's not overtly aquatic. It is fresh, almost like you're near water, like the Caribbean or something, but fresh in an unusual way, using iris and other things. This is Valentino Uomo Aqua. Interesting combination of tomato leaf with that beautiful, slightly powdery, but fresh iris. And there's probably some other aroma chemicals in here, making it fresher, making it almost reminiscent of aquatic. There's like the illusion of aquatic in here, but it's not fishy or marine like or mineral or anything like that. There is no sharp edges here. All round, beautiful, soft, fresh, clean, but in a very different way. More of a powdery way, but not overly powdery. That freshness keeps it light. Valentina Uomo Aqua. Let me know if you've tried this one. It is discontinued, but it's still out there on the discounters. I will link to what I can find down below. This is easily one of my favorite niche fragrances for the summertime based on a lot of citrus and mint, but with a deep, rich base, warm amber and woods, things like that. This is from Zerzhov. They call it 1861 Renaissance. Also one of the strongest fresh fragrances that I have in my collection. It stays relatively clean smelling, but not like soap, not like fresh out of the shower, very natural mint and citruses. Very bright, very, very bright, mouth watering and just uplifting, cooling, especially with that mint. But again, as it dries, it has some legs, beautiful kind of ambery warmth that keeps it grounded. It keeps it on the skin a while. There's a lot more going on as well. Green, citrusy, bright, juicy, warm. Great duality, easily mass appealing, but will have you smelling very, very classy. It smells niche. That is Zerzhov 1861 Renaissance. High quality stuff here. Here's one I talk about a lot, and I often describe it as being simple, but not basic. Therefore, I don't believe it to be generic. They achieved a beautiful simplicity here, one that can be enjoyed by guys of almost any age, but it still smells modern and not just following all the trends that the other houses are following from Dior, Dior Homme 2020. I've talked about this so much at this point. It's one of my most complimented fragrances. It's one of my most enjoyed designer fragrances. I reach for it the most out of pretty much all my other designer fragrances. I love it in so many situations. Although it is fresh and versatile, it still does have a classiness to it. This is fresh mostly by way of woods. I believe there's a lot of isoe super in here. So there's a fresh musky woodiness. In addition to being almost lemony, piney resinous from Elemy, there's something kind of almost citrus about it, but not overtly. The blend is so beautiful here, not a ton of depth, doesn't change a lot, maybe a little bit two dimensional, but for what it is, it's really, really nice. It's Dior, it smells like a Dior. I love it more and more as time goes on and I'll keep recommending it. That's Dior Homme 2020. 
from Narciso Rodriguez, a fragrance that claims to be blue. And it is kind of blue, but when you smell it, you know it's not just blue. This is called Bleu Noir Eau de Parfum. Fresh and musky. There's a soft, powdery muskiness here. Not like in Valentina Uomo Aqua. Doesn't have any iris. It is almost floral, but it's mostly musky. A lot of musk. You have to enjoy a muskiness, which is kind of sexy here, but also a little bit classy. And a little bit blue in its freshness. The bottle might even play into that. Sometimes we are influenced by the name, by the bottle, by the marketing and the design. So I can kind of sense that happening, but the fragrance is fresh, but not bright. It's kind of a dark fresh, sensual, more reserved, more thoughtful, maybe even a little bit more refined, but still a little bit simple. I love this stuff and it performs well. That is Narciso Rodriguez for him, Blue Noir, Eau de Parfum, long name, but great fragrance. And the final fragrance is one of my favorite designer releases in the past couple years from one of my favorite designer houses currently, which is Hermes. I was thinking about age 24, lovely stuff. Not always the most mass appealing because it can have a pretty heavy metallic note in it that not everyone's gonna dig. Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre, which I believe translates to frozen water, frosted water, something like that. The glass here tells you everything you need to know. You see the frosted glass. This stuff smells so cooling and fresh, it is stupid. I don't know how they made it cold. I'm gonna spray it. I haven't sprayed this since the summertime. In the air, I swear it lowers the air temperature. This is stunning stuff. It is bitter citrus. I get grapefruit, I get maybe like a citron. It's a dry, bitter, mouthwatering citrus. No sweetness. And that blends with some pretty intense vetiver, a woody, sharp, dry vetiver, but it never ceases to be extremely fresh, so cooling, may not be considered sexy, maybe more on the classy, refined side of things, but it's so fresh that it could be worn very casually, especially on the hottest days in the summer. I was reaching for this and it cooled me down. It made me feel so refreshed. Oh my gosh. This was love at first sniff. It blew me away when I first smelled it on a live stream sometime last year and I have loved it ever since. So this is a stunning release. It's a great flanker, and I highly recommend checking this one out. Tater Mez Eau Givre. All right, that's it for me. I wanna know what you think. Have you tried any of these fragrances? Are you one who prefers your fresh fragrances to be more on the generic side? Or would you prefer them to be more unique? No wrong answers. Let's talk about it down in the comments and I wanna know if you've tried and or enjoy any of these fragrances. Links down below in the description to everything if you wanna try them for yourself. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure you subscribe. Why not? You made it this far. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.